Hey everybody, welcome back to Engaging the Phenomenon and welcome back to Ask UFO Twitter. Today's Ask UFO Twitter is going to be recommended reading. And the books are mostly going to be uh, revolving around UFOs, but are also going to uh, go into some surrounding areas like consciousness and other aspects that are intertwined with the UFO phenomenon. So here for my portion, uh, one of the first books um, I want to um, put in this to recommend, especially if it's somebody who's never read a UFO book, um, and this may come off as counterintuitive, uh, is the book Alien Agenda by Jim Mars. And the reason why I am putting this book out there as a recommended um reading um you know first of all i like jim mars i like his books i don't agree with all his conclusions uh but um i thought he was a great guy and his work he tries to present in a way as like this is what i found through some research you know kind of do with it do with it what you will kind of thing he was never really pushing his perspectives hard on anybody but in that book, Alien Agendas by Jim Mars, he really just puts everything out there. So the book really touches on so many different aspects of the UFO phenomenon from over the past 70 years. Um, you know, like some of the different um, UFOs and UFO sightings, uh, some of the different um, kind of intelligences behind the UFO phenomenon. It gets into the telepathy and remote viewing and the remote viewers. Um, so it really is like a whole cluster of everything. So somebody who might just think UFOs are unknown objects in the sky will read this book and like their mind will be blown and say, what is going on? And that's kind of the point. It opens you up to uh, such a broad spectrum of realities. Um, to make you kind of question what you think you actually know. Um, so that's the first one, and it's for that reason. It's kind of just to open your mind and see what has been out there in the UFO lore for the past 70 years. What are some of the popular theories? Now, the next uh, two books, actually, is going to be um, Richard Dolan's UFOs and the National Security State. Um, these two books are uh, essential reading if you're serious about the UFO topic. And it kind of gives you a lay of the land, of the, the modern history of UFOs. Um, you know, great research. There's great events that are highlighted in there from all the way from the 1940s to um, it ends in the early 1990s until uh, Rich Dolan comes out with his third edition, which <laughs> hopefully will be sometime soon. Um, but those books are excellent. And they, those books were actually recommended to me both by Dr. Davis and Dr. Hal Putoff. Um, and again, it will give you a lay of the land on just about um, every important uh, thing that has occurred in the UFO field. Um, that's really noteworthy in, um, from the 1940s to the early 1990s. And the last book I want to put here for the recommended reading um, would be Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind by Shunryu Suzuki. And, you know, this is a Zen book, right? So people are going to be like, what? You know, what does this have to do with UFOs? Um, but this kind of perspective and philosophy, in my opinion, uh, Zen mind, beginner's mind is crucial, um, especially to UFO research when you're dealing with so many unknowns and the, the kind of idea and philosophy behind it, um, is to have an open mind and, you know, always have that beginner's mind of curiosity and openness and a willingness to examine your own thoughts and what you think are conclusions. Um, you know, the beginner is always ready to learn 
and is enthusiastic. Whereas, you know, the people, the experts sometimes, and the know-it-alls, you know, their mind is closed and, you know, they stop learning, especially at such a rate compared to the beginners. Um, and I will say here, and you're going to see XO talk about this, is uh, anything by Jacques Vallée is excellent reading uh, purely because it, it, it opens your mind to so many possibilities uh, regarding the UFO phenomenon. Thank you so much, guys. Hi, everyone. Exo Academian here. Happy to chime in on today's topic, which is suggested reading for the phenomenon slash ufology. Um, thanks to James for putting this together. And uh, I'm going to suggest Jacques Vallée. I'm going to make two book suggestions. For pretty much anything Jacques has written is worth reading, and I have read pretty much everything he's put out over the decades. He's just a really advanced thinker and has had decades to let these the data percolate in generating different hypotheses. And he's reversed course a couple times uh, as he's had more time to think about this. The first book I want to uh, draw attention to is Forbidden Science 4. Those of you who are not familiar, Forbidden Science is a series of journals um, or books covering journals that Jacques kept over decades. Each one covers about 10 years time, I think. Uh, the most recent version he put out our most recent edition is Forbidden Science 4, and a quote from that is, The cause of the phenomenon must be a form of, sub of consciousness manifesting in physical form. The effect of such intervention is devastating since it shapes our beliefs. Then from another book called Dimensions, uh, Jacques writes, The phenomenon's impact in shaping man's long-term creativity and unconscious impulses is probably enormous. The fact that we have no methodology to deal with such an impact is only an indication of how little we know about our own psychic world. That's from Dimensions. One more quote from Dimensions. Human life is not ruled by the juxtaposition of problem-solving exercises. Human life is ruled by imagination and myth. These obey strict laws and they too are governed by control systems, although admittedly not of the hardware type. If UFOs are acting at the mythic and spiritual level, it will be almost impossible to detect it by conventional methods. And that's what I would point out to people who, you know, critics, cynics, who argue why, why haven't these beings landed on the White House lawn? They just don't need to. That's such a simplistic and literal way to deal with things when they can actually have a much more impacting uh, role in our lives and entire human society by dealing on the mythic subconscious spiritual level, which is what I think is going on. And I call it architecting the subconscious. And Jacques is pointing out uh, this in all three of these quotes. Moving on quickly here. Um, now I want to talk about redefining reality and the parameters therein. Again, drawing your attention to a couple of quotes from Jacques with the idea that you would jump into a couple of these books. In Dimensions, he also writes, in my view, the widespread belief among researchers of the field in the literal truth of the abductions is only a very crude approximation of a much more complex tapestry. Another reality is involved here. And then one more quote, also from Dimensions. Attempting to understand the meaning, the purpose of the so-called flying saucers, as many people are doing today, is just as futile as was the pursuit of the fairies. If one makes the mistake of confusing appearance and reality, the phenomenon has stable invariant features, but also a comedian-like character. The shapes of the objects, the appearances of their occupants, and the reported statements vary as a function of the cultural environment into which they are projected. So this is Jacques getting at the idea of redefining reality and the parameters therein. We tend to draw these hard lines between, you know, is it a dream? Was it real? Uh, was it subtle reality? Was it, you know, gross reality? I think these are um, domains that this consciousness, this intelligence can move in between and that even the hard lines we draw, even the dotted lines we draw may be uh, ultimately illusory. One more um, point I want to make in reference to Jacques' work, uh, and that's to do with absurdity. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is apparent absurdity as a product of inferior intelligence, or at least apparently inferior intelligence. Jacques writes, again in the book Dimensions, the behavior of a superior race would not necessarily appear purposeful to a human observer. 
scientists who brush aside UFO reports simply have not given serious thought to the problem of non-human intelligence. Observation and deduction agree, in fact, that the organized action of a superior race must appear absurd to the inferior one. We're thinking about. Last thing I want to draw your attention to is this notion of expanding the questions. I think that's what the most important thing we can do right now uh, in trying to explore this topic is constantly examine the questions we're asking because I think that's where we lack. It's not in the answers, it's in the questions we ask. Jacques writes, the phenomenon could be a manifestation of a much more complex technology. If time and space are not as simple in structure as physicists have assumed until now, then the question, where did they come from, may be meaningless. They could come from a place in time. If consciousness can be manifested outside the body, then the range of hypotheses can be even wider. Again, that's from Dimensions. So these are the two books I want to draw your attention to, Dimensions and Forbidden Science 4. Check those out. Well worth it. And like I said, anything that Jock's written, worth reading. Thanks. First of all, thanks for inviting me back to uh, to ask UFO Twitter again. Uh, this week, the topic is the best books for people who are interested in getting into or maybe have already been into the entire subject of the phenomena. So I'm going to narrow it down to five selections. Um, I'm, I want to go back to some older stuff for people that are just getting into it. And also some newer things that I believe will get folks up to speed on important things that are going on. Um, one of the first books I ever read, uh, and I don't even have a copy of it anymore. I gave it away a long time ago was The UFO Experience by J. Allen Hynek. Um, I realize Hynek underwent a serious evolution over the course of his career from his time on Project Blue Book uh, to his later years, but it's a good starting point. Hynek's experiences in the field combine with his interactions with other scientists, um, looking into the question, gave him a unique perspective. And he also had firsthand experience in dealing with the United States government and their, shall we say, various indiscretions, uh, some of which he was involved in over the years, and others where he broke away from the company line later. So uh, the second one I would bring up, and this is a little controversial in some circles, is Passport to Magonia. Uh, from Folklore to Flying Saucers by Jacques Vallée. Uh, this book was published when I was still a child and probably before uh, many of you watching this were born. Uh, and much like Heineck, or perhaps more so, uh, Vallée underwent a transformation from being a researcher of nuts and bolts explanations uh, to the exploration of some larger phenomena that might run the gamut from technological craft to tenuous phenomena that may rely on the observer more than the phenomena being observed. I don't agree with a lot of his later conclusions personally, but I think they're worth considering if we're going to be open and honest and anybody who wants to approach the topic should really familiarize themselves with what Valet looked into. Uh, my third choice would be Captured, the Betty and Barney Hill UFO Experience, uh, subtitled The Story of the World's First Documented Alien Abduction. And that was by Stanton Friedman. Anybody getting into the topic knows who Stanton Friedman is. I'll confess that I've never been all that big into the entire alien abduction part of the phenomena, but this story is one of two, and I will say along with Travis Walton, uh, that have a hard time casting doubt on. And Friedman offers a lot of the research that really makes you think about it. Uh, these were two of the people who were among probably the least likely folks on Earth to want to draw natural atten national attention to themselves. And yet they went and told their stories, and there's more than a little evidence to support their tale. So... I think that's a good one. Um, 
those are all older books. But to finish, I'll list uh, to finish my list. I'll turn to a couple of more recent entries. Uh, one of these is Secrets from the Black Vault by John Greenwald. I actually have a copy of it right here. I loan a lot of my books out and some I don't even have. But this one I got fairly recently and John was nice enough to sign it. Um, I selected this one despite the fact that it's not entirely about UFOs, though there's plenty of UFO material there. But part and parcel of the entire UFO discussion, particularly for readers in the United States, it's the ongoing debate over how much secrecy there is on this topic with our elected officials. And John not only peers behind the curtains a bit, you know, but leads readers on a path where they can learn how to seek their own answers from government entities who do their work well being paid by our tax dollars, and that's important. Uh, plus, there's a ton of amazing trivia in there, whether it has anything or nothing to do with UFOs. Um, finally, I'll finish my list with the recently released second edition of Ryan Sprague's Somewhere in the Skies. Uh, the books I suggested earlier largely focus on the collection of data, uh, the analysis of what this phenomenon might really be. Ryan takes another path and deals with the way this phenomenon has directly impacted real people in their everyday lives. Sure, you can question if some of them are relaying 100% reliable information, but their stories are far too real and frequently painful. And Ryan's an experiencer himself. And I believe that gives him a unique perspective on this aspect of the UFO topic. And I think it rounds out all the stuff I've been trying to encapsulate with these books. So uh, there are a ton more good books out there. Any, but you can go on Amazon and just do a search and you'll find God only knows how many. Um, use your own discretion. Separate the wheat from the chaff. Try not to found, fall down too many rabbit holes. But I think these five are a good starting point for people who are looking to get into the topic. And, uh, you know, feel free to send me some feedback if you like. But, yeah, just start with those and then go branch out and find your own stuff. And thanks again for having me on. Hello, I'm going to do a book review right now on Anthony Peake's, um, not latest, but one of his books that's called The Daemon, A Guide to Your Extrasensory uh, Secret Self. So his view is that there are two separate uh, consciousnesses inside of us, everyone. Uh, one is in your left brain, it's called the Eidolon. One is in the right side of your brain, it's called the Daemon. Um, he thinks that the at the time of death, when we're starting to do a life review that the that the life review is basically our new life and we and our left brain our idolon does not understand that it is just having a life review it thinks that we're having a new life and it has no memory on any of the other lives you've had but he thinks that the daemon in your right brain has memory of all of your previous lives and it comes in to help every through each life that you're having because it knows what you've done in the past and it's trying to help guide you throughout this life. So he thinks that um, the way that the daemon speaks to your idolon is through the corpus callosum, which is the bundle of nerves that, that attach both hemispheres of your brain together. And, and he says that basically the daemon is always trying to leave subtle hints or hunches or dreams or information sometimes um, through things like um, a doppelganger, um, examples like that where it's trying to connect with you and it's trying to give you information because it does know and it's trying to guide you because it remembers the past lives you've had. So he goes on to have a whole bunch of different examples, um, one of them being Joan of Arc, who's uh, speaking or, or you know has voices in her head. And um, she thinks that they're coming from something called the council and Peek is saying that that's just coming from her that's her own dame and trying to help her, you know, figure out how to win this war and um, giving her information constantly in her head. 
Um, there's obvious, there's, there's things like uh, trances, why uh, hypnotic trances work and why sometimes people will wake up and they don't remember being hypnotized at all, even though they were speaking and having conversation. He thinks that the left brain is being put to sleep and this is allowing your daemon to be able to speak um, and still be you, but the left brain doesn't remember saying any of these things. Um, there's also the, uh, the Pythia is, a uh, an, um, the, like a psychic, uh, group of people, group of women that were helping, um, give messages basically to, in ancient Greece, they were supposedly communicating with the God Apollo and giving information. Again, uh, Peak thinks that this was just, uh, information that was coming through their daemons and knew the future events that were going to happen. So they were just, um, being guided basically by their, um, by accessing their daemon. Uh, there's a good example of, um, an experiment that Dean Radin did that is, um, it's a skin conductance, conductant, conductance experiment. And, um, they put a sensor on, on a group of people's fingers, started showing them a bunch of different, uh, photos. Some of them were, um, highly emotionally charged photos and some of them were calming photos. And, and what they concluded at the end of the experiment was that the subjects actually knew a couple right before the emotionally charged, um, photos were being shown before they were shown. So they knew. And so, uh, I think Brian Josephson said that the only way this could have happened is if they were somehow connected to the future, the information was coming from the future and peak, uh, thinks that where it was coming from was their daemon because they know what the future is. They've, they've been with you in these previous lives and they're just trying to, um, to help you out. So anyways, that's my book review. And, um, I thought it was a very fascinating book. So thanks. Are you ready to jump straight to the deep end? I think you are. I was going to say, and this would be an honorable mention, but I was going to say, uh, AD after disclosure, uh, by Bryce Sable. And Richard Dolan, because I think that's a very appropriate book for these times. But no, we're going to jump way after disclosure. Okay? Straight into the deep end of UFOs, ufology, the phenomenon, whatever you want to call it. My book selection was Contact from Planet Apu by Ricardo Gonzalez. I think it's from 2017. Maybe my favorite UFO book. It's not for, um, if you're trying to figure out if... Uh, the Tic Tac is uh, a bird or a um, a drone, then this book is not for you. You know, not yet, but it will be. Ricardo Gonzalez is a high-level contactee. I would say one of the most public high, pu most public high contactees in the world. He's loosely associated with a group called Rama in Peru, who've been receiving very high-level contact since the 70s and something that approximates what we know as the ce5 contact modalities which is you know what steven greer popularized which is basically you meditate and psychically contact beings they come down you see stuff what makes these guys the gold standard of contact is that they see physical aliens you know as far as we know physical but they don't just see them solo. Groups of people have seen them and interacted with them, including in California. Ricardo Gonzalez did one of these events. They meditated. And Paola Harris, who's been a UFO researcher for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. She worked with J. Allen Hynek. She saw a nine foot tall alien named um, Antarell. Now, trust me, I thought all of this was just as crazy as you did, just as crazy as you do. But I kept researching and kept researching, just like when I first learned about the UFO phenomenon in the beginning. And I kept researching and I kept researching. And I'm here to tell you that this is real. Ricardo Gonzalez and many of the people in Rama talked to a group of ETs, aliens, whatever you want to call them, beings that they call Apunians based on a mountain in Peru. That's where they get the name from. Now, the difference between these ETs and almost all the other ETs, that these aliens are very specific. They don't beat around the bush and just give vague New Age advice. You know what I mean? They do give vague New Age advice, but they give a lot of details about where they're from and what to do. And they do seem to sometimes show up physically. Um, 
And every five or so pages while reading this book, I was like, this is ridiculous. But then I'd pick it back up and it'd be fascinating. It's like reading Lord of the Rings. It's like reading um, a Marvel Avengers, X-Files, all rolled into one. And then you got to ask yourself, you know, this is clearly fiction, right? Of course not. Multiple people, and you can see them on YouTube, and you can, if you research, you'll see people from the 70s have said that they've seen these beings. Credible people. Paola Adams goes way back. You can see the trauma on her. If you have any ability to read humans, and not just, you know, numbers on a screen, you can see that this is some serious... PTSD that this woman has from meeting a very friendly alien named Antarell. And you learn crazy stuff in this book. I'm not co-signing the narrative that these aliens are presenting. That's a whole other story. You know what I mean? But, um, and that could be subjective if you want to go into Valet's, uh, his whole, uh, control, control theory. Yeah, control system theory. Are these, uh, are these beings based on our projections? You know what I mean? Hey everybody, um, I was asked to give a, uh, a book recommendation um, to be involved in this project. Um, so uh, based on what I do, looking at images, um, a degree in digital imaging and photography, um, one of my favorite books is a book written by uh, Gregory Harold. Uh, the Alien Connection. Um, and the reason why is because uh, the book takes place uh, between, yeah, 1974 to 1981 in Palm Springs, Florida. And uh, what happened was uh, he began to see vandalism around where he lived or what he thought was vandalism. So he began to set up cameras, which were 35 millimeter, uh, no digital. Um, and he began to pick up images that are very bizarre. Um, he has the photos, uh, frames from the, the films posted throughout the book. Um, he examines them meticulously um, and this was, of course, way back before Photoshop or any kind of uh, digital manipulation. Um, so this book is important to me, and I reached out to him, and we spoke a few times. Um, and he has his own interpretation of what these images have actually captured. But um, in any event, he captured some very bizarre anomalous images of something and that was going on in this area for some reason um and so you can look at the photos and interpret them yourself um as whatever you think they may be um but for me the important part was it took place before photoshop digital manipulation um it was shot with a 35 millimeter uh film camera which is important um and so um yeah i recommend this book highly um if you're interested in uh gregory's story um he when i spoke to him very honest guy uh, he actually has a second book out now. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, he bases it on, um, it's kind of all tied into religion. Um, so I guess you can interpret that the way you want. But like I said, if you're into, you know, examining the images and looking at, you know, actual visual evidence, um, this is the book. The Alien Connection. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I hope you uh, hope you think about picking it up. I believe it's available on Amazon and a few places. 
uh, online. Just type it in. He actually, I think, still runs his own website, and you can order the book from there if you like. So, if you pick it up, enjoy. Hey, everyone. We have some book recommendations for you. Yes, the first one we'd like to introduce is called Lessons from the Twelve Archangels by Belinda Womack. It is filled with meditations for every aspect of your life, and in using it, we have seen really miraculous results, really phenomenal, and a lot of very interesting information. Yeah, and uh, as far as the ufology goes, there's a really good one called Secrets in the Field by Freddie Silva, and... I mean, if you didn't believe in crop circles before and thought that they could possibly be made by men, read this book and it will absolutely change your mind because Freddie Silva is an expert in the field of crop circles. And he has a lot of very interesting studies. And uh, again, like you said, you, you won't be disappointed. It's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, another ET-based book is called Inviting ET. Mm -hmm. um, it's by Sue Walker. And... Again, a really excellent read. This book goes into detail on how to uh, run like CE5 protocols, like in their events, things like that, along with a lot of excellent tips, tricks, and uh, really sound advice for inviting ET. Yeah, and uh, a book that really started it all off for us was uh, The Dark Side of the light chasers by debbie ford yeah and it is really profound and it it does a really good job of helping you work through your uh, shadow work in a very positive and jovial way honestly it's it's her approach is just it really is phenomenal um allowing you to laugh at yourself in a light-hearted way and work through your um reclaiming your rejected and uh, discarded parts of yourself back into all loving one space. It's really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Uh, another book we recommend is called The Presence Process, and that is by Michael Brown. We recommend this book uh, because uh, being in the present moment, there's a lot of power in that. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of peace of mind. A lot of magic starts with being in the moment. And this is a 10-week course uh, that you do yourself that the book goes through every step of that, and we have uh, we just recommend, certainly <laughs> recommend it. That's and lastly, uh, we recommend the Emotion Code by Dr. Bradley Nelson, and it's really an interesting one because it uh, it teaches you how to do body testing and where this, a plethora of emotions may be stored um, physically and how to release them. So it helps you find them. Helps you get rid of them. Yes. And a, a lot of things, what's interesting is a lot of physical ailments or, uh, you know, distress, depression, things like that are generally, um, according, you know, to this book and a lot of research, not just uh, this doctor, that trapped emotions uh, really actually are a big stem of that. Of We haven't dealt with these emotions and they keep festering and festering and festering until they manifest as a physical or emotional or mental kind of illness. And so... Again, really miraculous things, you know, can happen. There's a plethora of healing modalities out there. We encourage everyone to take a look at everything. Always just keep exploring until you find what's right for you. Uh, and uh, please check out the other books. They are really mm -hmm. excellent. And we're so glad that we could share with you books that we really enjoy ourselves. And because my humble wife won't plug her own book, she is in the middle of making one right now, uh, hand-painted. It's a children's book called We Both Love, and it is about uh, contact for children in a really loving uh, and very special way. So look for that one. Um, that's coming out uh, this year, and it's going to be great. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a great day. See ya.